Hurri Hurricane Sandy is moving closer to our region tonight. From the Delaware and Jersey shores to the city and our AccuWeather meteorologists, live team coverage on Action News starts now. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with meteorologist Melissa McGee, Jeff Skaversky, and Rob Jennings. This is the view on Storm Tracker 6 3D. Everybody's been warned. It is time to hunker down. Hurricane Sandy is moving ever closer now. The Superstorm's outer bands are already bringing strong winds and rains to Delaware. Businesses and homes are sandbagged and are locked up tight. And by 5 o'clock in the morning, all non-essential personnel must be off Delaware roads. Sandy's biggest target, the Jersey Shore, is also getting a small taste of its power tonight. Waves are increasing in height and intensity. Look at that. Rain and winds are getting stronger there. Sandy's already impacting travel across the Mid-Atlantic. Philadelphia International is canceling flights. The roads are becoming more dangerous, and this is only the beginning. Sunday night, the big story in Action News is ready or not. Here it comes, Hurricane Sandy. The potential destruction from that megastorm has prompted the Philadelphia School District and Philadelphia Archdiocese to close all schools tomorrow. There are also dozens of other schools closed around our region, and they'll be running at the bottom of your screen along with other important updates. Now, our Action News reporters are scattered across our region tonight. Chad Perdelli there is live and hanging on in Rehoboth. Nora Mushanik is holding on to her hat on Long Beach Island. Kenneth Moten is live at Philadelphia City Hall. But first, we have live team coverage with our meteorologists, Melissa McGee and Cecily Tynan. Cecily, let's start with you. And Rob, first of all, I want to show you Storm Tracker 6 3D live with our million watts of power and showing that we do have some heavy rain across South Jersey and Delaware. And these are just the feeder bands really ahead of the main system. But to put this in perspective, the Chesapeake Bay area has already received more than 12 inches of rain in the past 24 hours. Now you can see how this rain is moving off the ocean inland. And again, we're seeing the bands that are coming more intense and this will continue in the overnight hours. And we have these live buoy reports. Chad Perdelli is in Rehoboth and you can see here winds right now out of the northeast sustained 33 miles an hour, gusting to 40 miles per hour and the storm system is still way offshore. This is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. As of 11 o'clock, it's 470 miles south southeast of Philadelphia. But you see how big it is from West to east, it's a thousand miles. From north to south, it's 1,500 miles. This is the second largest hurricane in recorded history. Only uh, Olga back in 2001 was bigger than this. So this is a massive storm system. It's moving to the northeast at 14 miles per hour. If it continued that track, wouldn't it be nice? It would head out to sea. That's not going to happen. But if you see its circulation, it's getting tighter wound up. It is strengthening. The pressure has been dropping, and the pressure is already lower than what the computer models were indicating. So that shows that this could be even a bigger storm, a more powerful storm than we were expecting. Maximum stain wind 75 miles per hour. Don't get hung up on whether it's a hurricane or a nor'easter when it moves ashore. But in the overnight hours, I do expect it to make this turn gradually to the north and west and then make that sharp turn inland by tomorrow night between Delaware, North Jersey. We've really narrowed the band between Stone Harbor and Long Beach Island is where I expect at this point we'll receive the impact, but don't get too focused on that cone because this is a huge storm, far reaching effects. We're more on that in the timeline. Let's head to Melissa McGee. Melissa. Yeah, Cecily, I really think it's important for people to know what to expect once the storm moves on in and how long this storm system will essentially linger across our region. So we'll talk about the timeline and what you can expect for the rest of tonight, right through eight o'clock tomorrow morning. We're dealing with breezy conditions and waves of rain. Cecily, 
Leslie was talking about uh, those feeder outer rain bands working their way just to the south of Philadelphia. We're going to be in and out of that activity for the rest of tonight and right through tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Monday, we're dealing with windy conditions and torrential rain, but I really think the heart of that storm comes in once we get into Tuesday afternoon right through 8 a.m. on Tuesday. So we're calling essentially for an 18 hour period where sustained winds. Keep in mind these are not gusts, but sustained winds anywhere from 58 miles per hour or higher. That's when we have the heart of the storm. So we're talking about flooding wires and trees being knocked down. And because of that, we're going to have long lasting impacts as a result of the storm system. So what to expect over the next 48 hours, long term power outages, major creek and stream flooding and major beach erosion as well. Keep in mind wave heights close to the Delaware Bay and also along coastal sections of New Jersey are already starting to rise. The waters are already starting to rise. So once that storm system gets closer to our region, you're going to have a storm surge and a wall of water anywhere from six to 10 feet high. So this is going to be a very dangerous storm. This could uh, alter the coastline, especially with that strong storm surge. This is going to be life threatening, so you really need to listen to those warnings. And if you haven't already done so, now is the time to evacuate. This is a storm system that once it moves in, it will move in and do so slowly and linger across the region. So coming up, Rob, going to have the very latest on Sandy and the impacts for our region. How much rain and how high will those winds blow with that full AccuWeather forecast? Okay. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Now let's check in. Once again, Delaware's governor has announced that all non-essential personnel have to be off the roads by 5 o'clock in the morning. Chad Padelli is live in Rehoboth. It looks like conditions have worsened there, Chad. Absolutely, Rob. Sandy showing her teeth, and she has some serious fangs. Over the last couple of hours, conditions have uh, uh, have gotten drastically worse. Take a look at the ocean there. Look at those roaring waves. You have this pelting horizontal rain, and these winds at this point are sustained. Really here in the last hour or two is when things have gotten really bad. This is basically a ghost town at this point here in Rehoboth Beach because of those mandatory evacuations from three-quarter of a mile inland. Governor uh, Jack Marquette was out here earlier today. I spoke with him. He said what's really scary about this storm is the conditions we see right now and the meat of this storm still hasn't hit. All the businesses shut down around 6 p.m. You can see many have sandbags. Other businesses further in have basically boarded up the windows, but people are heeding the governor's advice. They are evacuating, and that's what people need to do because time has basically run out. And as you can see, this storm is getting really bad, and it can uh, only get worse over the next 24 hours. But that's the latest here in Ho with Beats, Chad Bordelli, Channel 6 Action News. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Chad. Take care of yourself there. The rain is already pouring in New Jersey's southernmost point. Beachfront streets in Cape May have begun to take on water. Crews there are preparing for historic flooding. Our Nora Mushanik is live at Brant Beach on Long Beach Island, very near where Sandy could make landfall tomorrow night. Nora? Hi there, Rob. It's been a wet and windy night here on Long Beach Island. As you know, this barrier island as well is under a mandatory evacuation order, but not everyone has left. Long Beach Island is like a ghost town. High tide has caused street flooding already, and most but not all residents have evacuated. Sherry and Tom Hughes own a hotel and restaurant in Beach Haven and wanted to stay in case something went wrong there. I get the fact that people should be leaving, but uh, we've been through this a lot, and we're very high here. Our property is almost 12 feet above sea level, and, and we feel pretty confident that we're going to be okay. I uh, took stuff from our restaurant and brought it home. Uh, other than that, no, we, we have a lot of water in the house, and... We're good to go. Sherry's father is staying too. I've had the water washed by the side of my house before, but that's when we didn't have the large dunes. Rich Gabrielli's home is just across from the beach. He and his wife decided not to evacuate, but now he's having second thoughts. The last storm, it just seemed like a dud, you know, so this one, you know, I thought it was going to be the same, and then, but the more I see about it, I just, you know, get a little concerned. Now, Route 72 is the only road that connects the island to the mainland. As you know, it is closed right now. You can get off the island, but you cannot get on. Live in Brant Beach, I'm Nora Mushanik, Channel 6 Action News. Thank you, Nora. Now, Atlantic City Casino Boardwalk fronts are boarded up tonight. They are prepared for a direct.